Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be exploring the abandoned city of Varosha, located in the Turkish controlled area of Famagusta in northern Cyprus. Varosha was once a popular tourist destination and the economic centre of Famagusta. However, in 1974, the city was evacuated during the Turkish invasion of Cyprus and has remained abandoned ever since. Today, it stands as a haunting reminder of the conflict that tore Cyprus apart. We will be visiting it with an actual resident who lived there at the time of the invasion and has not been able to return to her house since. As we walk through the deserted streets of Varosha, we can see the remnants of a once thriving city. Buildings are left to decay with broken windows and crumbling walls. Cars sit abandoned, covered in dust and rust. The silence is eerie and the only sounds we hear are the wind and the occasional bird chirping. The region of Russia has remained abandoned for so long is due to the political dispute between the Greek Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots. The area is currently under the control of the Turkish military and there have been ongoing negotiations to determine the future of the city. Despite the uncertainty surrounding Varosha's future, there have been some recent developments. In 2020, the Turkish government opened up a small section of the beach for public access, sparking hopes that the city may one day be restored to its former glory. Come with us as we explore the city of Varosha. So that's a tiny Turkish military guy. Yeah. There's cameras everywhere, so yeah. on our right here, that is... is that That's a famous hotel there, which was um, abandoned, we're going to see it soon. So and what, then, what's in here, though, right? This is also... Um, also um, these were apartments that were also abandoned, but the military were also here in the past. And, and this is a very famous hotel, we're going to see it now. Look at that, there was an iconic picture of a guy hanging upside down during the war. Look at that. Yes, that looks so brand new and fancy. Yeah, and then look at this. Oh my goodness. We're going to explore. This and is look at that. Weird. Yeah, so folks, we've just arrived here at the abandoned city. We're going to take a look around the, I guess, the new part or the part that's not abandoned. This where we're walking now wasn't abandoned. And it was, so when we, when the borders, the crossings opened in 2003, the only place that we could actually stand and see the view of our city was yeah. in this hotel so this wasn't abandoned uh -huh. um, and the view um, so we could only walk to certain points we could only walk to a certain point and then there was then barbed wire series so we can actually walk yeah. onto the beach here can we yeah you're going to see the beach and it's a divided beach because you cannot enter the city without going through there it's like a crossing almost and in the sea, there's an invisible, like a barrier underwater. So you can't swim around? You cannot swim around. And if you do, you will get caught. Yes, folks, because if you watch one of my, one of my other videos, I went to Tijuana, mm -hmm. um, on the border between the United States and Mexico, and they have a similar fence that literally mm -hmm. goes off into the sea. Um, so if you try to swim around, I'm sure someone will catch up with you. So we're, <laughs> we're about to check that out. Do I have to go through the hotel then? Yeah, there's a beautiful patio outside. And, and I'll also show you the... The actual view we got all these years that we couldn't come back so we could see our whole city from a distance and not go there you can imagine that feeling for all these years and would people not want to do that so some people would say right, i'm not going to absolutely not it's too painful a lot of the interiors are similar to the way they used to be you know and my parents used to come here for drinks in the night when they were young and they would sit on this very patio in the 60s and 70s. I brought you here just to show you the view initially of where we're going to walk today. See where there's a person sitting there, right? Actually that point was the that was point the... that you could walk up to until that point and you could not cross over and still today you can not cross over. So we could only use this bit, but this bit was only open to us in 2003, right? The whole other bit was only opened just over two years ago for the first time. So people can stay in this hotel mm -hmm. and that one's open? They, they've opened <coughs> that after. The, the Devron Beach yeah, restaurant, yeah. is that open? That's open now, but it wasn't obviously all these years because they weren't really allowed to have anything in. Now because there's an increase of people coming here, because people are coming to explore this abandoned city, the Turks kind of took advantage. It's illegal for them to actually operate there because there's a lot of more tourists coming here. Look at the color of the sea. 
I mean, you were in yeah. Tijuana, and, and it reminds you a little bit of it could be in Latin America. Usually, it could be in. Well, folks, guess where I'm today? I'm just about to visit the abandoned city of Russia. This is actually a functioning hotel on this side, but if you go over to stair, that is abandoned territory. It hasn't been lived in for 47 years. We're gonna explore that today, folks. So we're just walking down towards the abandoned zone now, but there is a beach bar, which has just opened recently, yeah. right on the it's edge. It normally shouldn't have been opened. Uh, yeah, it's actually, they're all really illegally opened. So this is on the buffer, UN zone, buffer zone, is it? it no, but it's, it's not, but it is very close and there was nothing existing all these years and really and truly they shouldn't be opening it. I see there's a lot of signs saying no photography. Well, I'll tell you why, because there was a lot of uh, military outposts here. There's less now, but in the past there was a very big military outpost right here. Wow. If we continue on the coastline, going all the way straight down and just around the corner, you've got Ayanatha there. It's kind of like the Ibiza, you know, the party cities, DJs, raves. But these buildings here, folks, yeah. Tweaker Tower, is that? Wow, that is something else. Eh? You can still see the old shutters. And, and I see there's a gunman sign there, or is it yeah, army? Yeah, because if you, if you... all the army military were there. They were there, but not They're anymore? Not anymore. This was a hotel. These were apartments. These were apartments. That was a hotel. Just stood still on time, really. Yeah. That one, to me, looks unsafe. Yeah, nobody's allowed to go in. Both of us tried to get in, and within seconds... Somebody would be on us? Oh, yeah. We'd get shot? No, not shot, but they would They'd be on to us, like... They might give you a warning. If they <laughs> see you doing it a second time, then they'll arrest you. They give you a warning, usually, unless you get a very pissed off officer. We're definitely under surveillance. This is not the only camera on the beach, folks taking on the abandoned tour. Farosha is the Greek name, is it? Yeah. Famagusta That's is the general uh, area. Famagusta, exactly. So it's like Ayanapa and Protaras is in Famagusta district. Yes. This part of the city was called the Varosha. Literally just abandoned in 1974 and no one has been near it since. And it's amazing in, in some of the places you can see some um, of items left inside some not you know like old fridges and you know, things like that it's obviously been graffiti yeah signs of graffiti so people well, have it sneaked says in it's it's actually no photos so this was also military photograph v film chems something so that's photograph v film probably not sure 99 so these were written in 99 1999 and so 24 years ago 24 years ago so the this is when this area none of the crossings were open then either so the people who were here were either un or military so this might have been written because the, the turkish zippers were not allowed to enter the city and nobody was allowed was, even where that hotel is where we've just been oh there. yeah the hotel yes you could enter you could walk here people could actually see these buildings and then from there on that was it, and I'll show you, there was full of barbed wire there. Possibly young kids from the Turkish Cypriot side might have been able to enter back in the day, you know, sneaked in, although quite unlikely because again, there was a lot of military, but this area was accessible for them. And then for us in 2003, but only this but part. Prior to 2003, whenever they opened the land borders. Yeah, yeah, we were. You, you couldn't come to this beach here? Uh, um, no, we couldn't as Greek Cypriots, but the people who lived here, the Turkish uh, Cypriots could come. We were only able to come to this, finally, to this area in 2003. But again, only here, till that point there. And then in 2021 20, October, they finally let us in that abandoned city. 2021? 20, 20, so, yeah, so three years, two years ago? Yeah. After so COVID? Uh, it was, sorry, it was maybe 20, I might be mistaken. But because of COVID again, we were, they closed the crossing, so we couldn't enter again. So basically, yeah, so I, oh, yeah, I mean so the first time I came was in 21. Yeah, during COVID-19, yeah. I take it the border crossings were closed because a lot of countries closed their land yeah, borders. they so closed here as well. Um, they closed for a year and a half approximately. Really bad because unfortunately there's a lot of people who cross every day for work. A lot of people lost their jobs. School kids couldn't get to their schools. What's this thing to the right here? Is this a military installation? Uh, no, this is a new installation. Uh, another little restaurant that popped up. 
But again, you have to go that, to the other side to get to yeah, that one. Yeah, this is the area where it was all barbed wire, and we could only have access, and we could only go to that point. And still, till today, you cannot cross, you cannot go into the sea and just swim there. So this is technically Turkish Republic of Northern yeah, Cyprus. Yeah, and that would be the just the UN kind of buffer zone. In a so way. that's you. So after that fence is UN zone, is it? Yeah, it's UN and and also the Turkish military were always here. I've never felt like this before in my life. This is yeah. the first time I've seen a city in such a yeah. state. I've seen abandoned buildings before, but not on a scale like this. Look at the turquoise waters. Look yeah. at this. It's it's beautiful. I mean, that's why I said to you maybe bring a bathing suit because although it's still a bit chilly, but. Coke, Neil Bottles. Do you like regular or? A regular. Regular. Regular, yes. It's I think. Regular, right? I think it tastes better out of the glass bottle, folks. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> and you don't find these everywhere anymore. No, 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 no. You do not. No. I love these. This is what I grew up with. So just a little, the pit stop cafe, little shop on the edge here. Turkish music on the bigger. All your hats for sale. Fancy spot of fishing. Some shoes. Yeah, yeah. Camera, in your bag? No, just camera. Okay. Oh, I okay. Okay. So there we go, folks. We're in. Put that in the bin. Nothing so the, contraband, folks. Yeah. So just a GoPro camera. Rent so the bicycle. Yeah. yeah, and you can rent the bike. They are the crappiest. I've rented them, and they all 90% of the brakes are not working. Uh -huh. The tires are flat. They are really bad. They squeak like crazy. Or golf carts, folks. If you're a bit lazy, you can rent a golf <laughs> cart for the day. Golf carts, bicycles, or e-scooters, or just use your good old two feet. God gave you two feet to walk on. There we go, folks. So we're now in the abandoned city of Russia. Abandoned in time. Left since 1974. It's only been open to the public in the last three years. Is that right? Three years, yeah. 2020. Three years, and then they closed it again because of the pandemic. And then they reopened just after the pandemic. So I actually got to come here for the first time two years ago. Eleni is actually from this area. We're going to see her apartment where she grew up she had to leave after 1974. Some of the wires have disintegrated but the street lamp's still there, the bulb's still in it. Old telephone numbers of the... Back in the days when telephone numbers only had five digits. The balcony's a bit crumbling. Yeah. And see, these are the things that prevent us from going inside. They've added these um, and basically you're not permitted to go beyond that point. They've added all these signs saying we don't attention, the buildings will collapse and this is sort of their excuse of not letting you inside your own house because they're saying it's collapsing, they don't want to take responsibility. You can imagine not being able to come here for 47 years, finally coming here, you're standing right here and you're looking at your house and you can't go inside. It's bloody frustrating. So this is why a lot of people who had to come here only came once. It's like you're scratching an old wound, you've seen your house, You've seen your old door, your own balcony, your own trees, perhaps. And now, why should I come a second time, you know? I remember the fact that I, I learned how to ride my bicycle here. I remember playing on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, then I remember, of course, the sirens, the war. Yes. Um, I remember the knock on the door that we got from our neighbor, because my father was working at the time in the hospital. So we got a knock and basically my neighbor said we had five minutes to evacuate and they were, it was an air raid. You could hear the bombs dropping and everything was happening extremely fast. So we literally had five minutes to leave our home. So my mom rushed, she prepared an overnight bag just for one night, you know, and we left with our flip-flops, nothing. We took nothing except an overnight bag. And my poor mom, in a rush to leave, she was worried that because it was summertime, she wanted to close the shutters. Carmen would keep cool in the hot summer months. Yes. She managed to close two, but the middle one she left open because she didn't have enough time. We got a second. And when we came back all these years later with my mom, she was very quiet on the whole walk. And then when she saw the apartment, she didn't say much. And then she kind of got really emotional. The moment she saw her apartment and the shutter was still halfway, still the way halfway, she had left, she left it, 47 years, 47. that's what got to her. And will she come back? No, I doubt it. This was a closure the first time I came. I needed to have that closure and I had my closure. 
And so for me, it is interesting to show other people my city. And so this is why I'm doing this, because I want people to see it. I want people to hear the story of the city and experience um, how it was in the past and what it is today in the present. So that looks like one that was under construction. There's a lot of buildings that were under construction and they didn't have time to finish them. It's like the temporary staircase mm -hmm. in there while they put the, the lift yeah, shaft. Yeah. Easy. Funny way that they've put like a cycle bicycle lane, but there's yeah. no traffic. I know. <laughs> That's a bit and weird. In one way, I would have loved if they had le left the roads the way they actually were. They've paved these roads. So before they opened this area, they created this road. The I look at this roundabout. This is all new. This is new. There was a roundabout here, always. But then they added these. Cactuses, cactuses, little palm yeah. trees, and it's yeah. irrigated. Yeah. So that's weird. There's the old British post box. Yeah. Post boxes Jeez. under the British time would have had the crown and the name of the king or queen. Yeah. So George Rex. Is it? Yeah. George Rex. Yeah. yeah, George Rex mm -hmm. for king. So that would have been from. 1920, oh, maybe around, around about 1920, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, these post boxes, they would have been red mm -hmm. originally in the British time. Yeah. So you can still see elements the of the red paint yeah. and they were painted yellow for the colours of but Cyprus. Even the time that they pick up the mail it was it's still around. Yeah, like this little thing, because that's the next collection. 47 years ago, I don't think the postman <laughs> has been near this in 47 years. <laughs> I wouldn't put a postcard in there. It's not going to get picked up. I wonder if there's any mail inside it. I'll ask my brother, he's a postman, he might be able to oh, get so me a key. Cool. In the Republic of Ireland, yeah. They kept the same post boxes, oh, wow. but they painted yeah. them green because their color is green. That's hilarious. So you can still see That's hilarious. post boxes from the colonial era. Wow. The name of the king would have been at that time. Soldiers, they were coming from, the planes were landing, they were parachuters dropping in, and this would have been all the bullet holes. These were really badly affected in their soul. Should have brought my swimming togs, folks. Oh no, you should have. You could have oh, today. They're, they're, back, they're back in the car there, yeah, but. The sea's quite, it is still cold, I must say. Yeah. Yeah. I've no towel. So we're just walking down to the little but cafe. You won't find, sorry, you will not find the same beach. Larnaca is, is lovely. It's a lovely little town. I mean, you're not going to find that white sand, the crystal clear water. That's the police checkpoint there. Yeah. No entry with bicycles or Kopek. Don't know. <laughs> Kopek is a dog. dog yeah. Kopek. See, now we're on the other side. We were standing there. We literally had to come all around, around the checkpoint yeah. but to come past that fence. Yeah. Although they don't officially call it a checkpoint, but it sort of is. And actually they have opening and closing hours. 4.35, they'll tell you to leave. So it is closed. It's not 24-7 accessible. So wh where does Greek Cyprus begin? Where is it? Over um, there? Just more or less where the last, you see the last building there? Oh, so this there? is all... Yeah, this is all part of the city. Right. More or less where that last building, just a little further from there, will start the Greek Cyprus, more or less. That's how the original streets would have been, so except... The, the nature has taken over, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So you couldn't cycle bicycles, you couldn't walk really Exactly, down. and they wanted to, you know, they're benefiting because they're, they're renting bicycles, that's income, they've got that, that's income. Bamboo growing all here, yeah. folks. Meanwhile in Ireland, folks, it's snowing right now, it's minus three degrees. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking a little escape away from coldness check out Ryan <laughs> 80 euros return from Dublin I'm doing this on an absolute budget folks probably spent about 300 400 pounds for the whole week including yeah, flights accommodation um, tour I'm food. the most expensive one <laughs> yes but worth it absolutely worth it yes Aww. you know folks I'm a budget traveler so I do like to keep costs down but sometimes it is yeah. worth getting a local perspective on things yeah. because you can walk around this for free but you wouldn't have any sort of insight as to what the buildings were or you know, personal, someone who's actually lived here. I lived here until the age of four, which was until 74. So now you know my age too. My childhood was here. My childhood was, was on the beach. Yes. My childhood was, was riding bicycles here, running free without shoes. You know, we never wore shoes. Yes. My parents drinking gin and tonics, us sitting, you know. Yes. Um, we used to go to bed at midnight. You know, it's just a very relaxed, very beautiful life. Yes. Um, with a lot of history as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of good memories. Um, can you remember any of the corner shops? <laughs> and now in Nicosia, they open exactly the same shop, the same logo, and it was the only uh, card shop, and, and you could buy little teddy bears and cards, birthday cards. Uh -huh. That was the only kind of card shop. See, gift souvenirs. Gift souvenirs, Cyprus yeah, ceramics. Yeah. 
Tizi Gap. Galaxy we still have with the same logo on the Greek side close. Toyota garage? Yeah, this is one of them, but there's a bigger one we're gonna see, and actually that's a really interesting one because so they had two. Um, did they leave any cars behind? They did. The other one, which is right there, in the showroom, they had maybe eight cars, brand new, and they were in the showroom. When they opened this area three years ago, for some reason, they decided to remove the cars. We don't know why cars are, but they did remove them. And again, if you go to old footage, again, if you look on YouTube, yeah. and it was the same poor owner as in Nicosia who lost his car. You see, and they're in a basement yes. in the buffer zone. So um, that's right. If you watch the video about the buffer zone, Nicosia. the green line in Nicosia, you'll see the cars in the basement. So that's where the same owner as the garage here we're about to see, he owned both garages. And during the invasion, he actually lost both garages. Yeah, both. <laughs> he was not a lucky man, that's no. for sure. Uh, he was actually Armenian. Uh, why would they have furs on an island? You um, furs? That's in the summer can get up to 40 centigrade. The reason they were selling fur coats was because we had all these famous people visiting the island. I mean, literally very famous Hollywood stars were coming here with a lot of money and they would have either houses here or stay in the luxury resorts. And they would like to buy a fur coat since they were here to take back with them to the United States. Mm -hmm. And they were selling fur coats, 40 centigrade, and yet they had a fur coat show. show. <laughs> and people were buying, obviously, those fur coats. Yes. They had a, very, a lot of wealthy people coming. This was an old kiosk, so you could buy your newspapers, chewing gum, cigarettes. And you can see, still see the old Pepsi or whatever it was in those days. Oh, Coca-Cola bottles? Yeah, Coca-Cola, most likely. Could be. Flick inside. Oh, look at the wires. So this is a UN building? Yeah, so yeah. this is where the UN are. So they were here all these years and they were actually living in there. Not anymore? Yeah, they are. They're still there. They're still based there. Yeah, you see UN soldiers. It's, a, it's an active... Um, not so many, obviously. I don't know if they live there anymore. Most likely they don't live there. Windows no, are right on the top. Yeah. There's a pigeon living in it. Or it looks there, but they use the lower level. I mean, I've seen, you, you see them walking. I've seen them quite a few times here. I wonder if he a <laughs> Turkish separate pigeon or a Greek separate pigeon. Hmm. <laughs> Bit of a joke there, folks, but yeah. <laughs> Endelweiss was a, another very famous cafe. And it was popular because they had the best ice cream in Famagusta and used to get that, you know, in the 70s where they give you ice cream in a glass kind of bowl. Uh -huh. They give you like all these color films, terribly colorful, the pink and black and, you know, vanilla and whatever. So we used to come as a treat. My parents used to bring us here on a Saturday. We used to sit and have this ice cream and my parents were having gin and tonic. But there's an old jukebox inside as well. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to yeah. be. Um, yeah. What's out for cycle? We're crossing a cycle lane here, folks. <laughs> what's out for scooters? Yeah. Swimming pool and stuff. It's like a pond thing, but this again is a new thing. This is, I mean, it was an old park here, a very old, we used to come here. I mean, I remember sort of with my mom coming here, mm -hmm. swings and things like that. So they're allowed to sort of open little they're bits of They're not really allowed. This is all not, I mean, this is not really permitted to do, but they are moving on. They went ahead anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they went ahead with those little pop-up restaurants or whatever you want to call them. They went mm -hmm. ahead and restored this park so people come here. Yeah, it's actually illegal, what they're doing. Illegal? Going against illegal. I mean, yeah. they shouldn't be doing this. They're planning to open a, some kind of a municipal building. It was an old municipal building, and they're actually thinking of... I, I'm not sure if they actually went ahead with it, but again, it was a big uproar in the media, and it's like, how can we do that? And just playing with people's emotions and feelings and provocation. You know, they're provoking all the time. Not correct, you know. Um, oh, that's a theater? That used to be our, our theater. This was another showroom with Japanese cars. What's this? I think they were apartments actually. And again, you can see where the UN are. See how damaged the building is? Yes. There was again bullets there. And then you can see the old sign Hoover. Oh, behind that tree. Yeah. yeah. Now no, the flags. No, they didn't. They didn't because the windows are all shattered. But their, the idea is to open perhaps one of these buildings, reopen them. Reopen it again. So we can see how flags are very important yeah. to denote what territory you're in. Yeah, yeah, literally wherever you go, you'll always see a Turkish and a TRNC flag. They're kind of like a mirror image, like a, almost like yeah, a the same, um, same part from the, the two bars. The yeah, except the colouring. This used to be a very famous Famagusta High School. 
and now they're thinking of perhaps bringing it back again and, and opening a public service area. But this was a high school. A gymnasium. Oh, yeah, gymna yeah oh, there we go, the gymnasium. Gymnasium basically is, in Greek, gymnasio means high school. That was the main entrance, let's say. But it was a beautiful, I mean, look at the building. Now, there's something very interesting written, and that must be really old, in blue letters, uh -huh. Greek letters, it says Enosi Imoni Lisi. And basically, Enosis, Enosis means, en Enosi is the only solution, in, 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 in blue, meaning Greek. So that was obviously, must have been done probably in the late, mid 60s uh, for them remember we were discussing how people wanted were uh, enosis with greece and they were they didn't want the turks anymore somebody must have in the 60s written that um, and this is exactly what we didn't want in this island you know we didn't want that enosis with greece we didn't want the enosis with the turks with turkey just the, um, the extremes one very, of yeah this is extreme kind of rightist and um, the fascist who um, were provoked and they and they were they would leave slogans like that which and that's a really old one that must have been done in the 60s so telephone box another chaos there Out of bounds down this street here. And this was a street. And this would have been so you had a lot of the hotels on the beachfront. Some of the people that could afford to live here, apartments or who got lucky and got a good deal. But a lot of the residences were living slightly off. So this would have been more of the residential, yes. not so much the commercial. So that's the seafront just here. Yeah, the seafront is right there in front. In front. And we don't have access to it here at this point but we will later when we go to that side i mean it's not exactly here it's just a little few meters down there but we will see it soon look at that look at that old shadow there you can still read some of the signs can't you jasmine leather yeah, shop yeah, another so you have the fur coat and now you have the leather shop as well because again you had all these people who had money and they were going to be, you know, they were they were on holiday and they found very luxurious shops here, you know, leather and fur. And There's one, we process all mix of colour films back in the day before yeah. digital cameras. Oh, you won't believe it. When I first came here, when this place first opened, I mean, rather when I first came here, we actually spotted a little, some of the, the film and I didn't even spot it. I was here with a journalist and he spotted, he said, oh my God, that's film, but they removed it mm. really oddly. I'm not sure one of the shops because there was a lot of film shops here, unfortunately removed later. And most likely because they don't want to leave any evidence you know, they might have spotted it, mm -hmm. and then they came in then. Pavlos Kiriakou. No books left, though. <laughs> they've left the bookshelves, but they've taken all the books. <laughs> Look, there they might have had postcards or magazines or something on the right there, those metal things. Unbelievable. Yeah. But remember what I told you, not much as regards to name. I mean, you would think that there'd be a lot more green here, but somehow there isn't. Which that it would have taken over more of the buildings. Like this? I sure. mean, yeah, you would yeah. think that would be all, all over this. Over. But it's, it's almost as if even the ecosystem somehow knows what people went through and they, it's like they don't want to cover up the houses. I don't know. Um, you expect that to be covered. Yeah, yeah. Some build, there are some buildings which are. That was Olympic Airways. <laughs> Olympic. Olympic. Oh, they're defunct now, yeah. aren't they? They're closed. They're yeah. closed, yeah. yeah, yeah. Olympic was Airways? A, the Greek, um, it was a Greek airline. So that was their office? That's that was where their you... office, because a lot of, obviously, Greece was a very popular um, destination, so they had a... That's where you go and get your flights in flights, there. Yeah. Travel agent. Travel agent. Stasino self-drive cars. Just car rental place, estate agencies. Back in the days when telephone numbers only had six digits or five digits, six, seven, zero, eight, zero. Yeah, <laughs>
1974. I wasn't even thought about back then. I was. <laughs> Jet. Jet was a uniform shop. Again, in Nicosia, there is a Jet on Montarios Avenue. Um, and you still, the owners have exactly the same logo and they still sell uniforms to, till today. Look at that. National and Grindley's Bank. Yep. Never heard of that before. Further down, they've got a park place as well. Yeah, you can see the tree growing out of the side of that one. It's taken over a little bit here. No parking. I wonder if that original. It looks quite new, I mean, doesn't it? It looks new, but who would have written it? I mean, there's no... There's no cars? There's no car. I mean, why would somebody write that? And what very likely it was old. Um, so some of the original features yeah. are just preserved almost perfectly. That one, what's this? 5e shop. This was a uh, well-known uh, clothing shop. So would people have been given time to get out or was it... I hope not, no. We had five minutes. Exactly. I mean, we knew there were tensions, obviously. Nicosia was the first to be invaded and then other areas around Nicosia, but then there was a fire. So we thought, hmm, maybe, just maybe we're lucky. But they continued a few weeks later and they decided to they, not they decided they knew and then they came into this area so we knew there were there were tensions we were sort of in a way prepared Us? but yeah they're allowed to cross there believe it or not so we were in, to some degree prepared so my mom and my parents had you know my dad said you know just in case my you know, my mom have your passports and documents in one place just in case something happens we are ready he actually prepared her like if to the point where if i'm not home you are to go with the neighbors they will take you to a safe place and that's what happened he wasn't home and we ended up going with our next door neighbors we packed up everything in one car they had how many kids i think two or three kids three kids us two kids my mom them all of us in one car and off we fled and as we were leaving with them with our car they were bombarding the city so it was quite we had a scare so we really and truly had five minutes Maybe some people had a little longer, but we had, it was a very short period and we heard these sirens at five in the morning and we knew already there was an air raid and so, you know, we evacuated really quickly with, with really not much warning. Oh, oh my god, disco. Disco. D-I-S-C-O. Disco. And look at the, those were the lights inside, the disc, you know those lights? That yeah. It's mad. People live there that are people. Yeah, uh, it's settlers. sort of. It's sort of considered. You know, it's like a buffer zone area, but there are people that actually live, and they and they have to have access. Only the residents that live there that are permitted. So there's a car going past here. So these people. People are people that live here in in certain either. Yes. A lot of them are military personnel. Um, see what I mean about the Instagram pictures. This yeah. City ones. Another Toyota garage there? Yeah, so this is where those cars were. Here, there were displayed, I think maybe five, six cars were displayed there. Yes. And again, if you go into, uh, just Google Famagusta old abandoned cars, you will actually see them. And they were there till the opening. You know, and then they removed them. I don't know, we don't know why. <laughs> so there's actually a bus but, service yeah. that goes down here? Yeah, but again... We can't go down only, there? It's No, we're not allowed to go there. Look, Barclays Bank, there. You see? Barclays Bank, oh there's yeah. a British bank. British bank. So there's a bus service that actually comes up and down here. So this is for people that live in this area. This area? Um, it says basically for the uh, people that live in this area. So you and I, if we wanted to hop on that bus. We couldn't get on the bus. No. They have to show no. like a residence pass. A residence, and this is only allowed for residents. Oh. They had a fish market here, a vegetable market, and there was a it was a whole kind of shopping area and further down they had more shops and another market further down but this was a market uh, area but the butcher was here so it's actually collapsed the roofs come yeah, off here yeah so all this is on the road yeah. hence why the the bicycle path is <laughs> sort of out into the middle of the road <laughs> that bicycle path. yeah you don't want to be cycling past I this i would have loved if it just went straight into one of those buildings yeah that one's a bit collapsing The checkpoints at that point. <laughs> That's a 
An old pharmacy, Pharmakion. <laughs> and look at that old Greek Orthodox church. Look at that. The oh, details. Yeah. That was the church, uh, one of the main churches, which is an, an abandoned church. Is that Turkish, obviously? Yeah. Ons is equivalent. Uh, is, um, it's, it's something like attention, uh, roads, or, or repairs, or whatever, don't enter the building, attention. That's the, a Greek one. It's a Greek sign, yeah. 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 So it's a Greek street, but then there was a mosque here. So people would have lived and side by side before, yeah, there yeah, wasn't any. Yeah. Oh, they were. And this has been uh, also a mosque that was you know, obviously abandoned for all these years, and now they're, they've restored it and they're working on restoring. This is all part of the mosque. Uh huh. Um, so you can actually go inside here? You can go inside the mosque. It's nothing wild, I mean, but you can have a. It's just a, a very basic. Um, so it would have been all your kind of uh, sports shops and cafes and you know. See the underwear signs. is that underwear? Yeah. yeah. Underwear shop. So a series of kind of shops, old Seven Up sign, old Coca Cola. You can place. I need new suit, folks. Okay. Suit shop. I wonder will they be ready in time? <laughs> Made by next week. There's a new place for order for handmade suits. Maybe in 50 years from today. We can just see, folks, the mosque is being refurbished. I, honestly, I think a lot of this, you know, if it's ever reopened, which it will in eventually. I mean, I think it will eventually, but I don't think it will ever belong to the Greeks anymore. The Greek side, it's going to be eventually swallowed in by the, by the Turks. Don't think um, they'll have some sort of I don't, I mean, shared was, area, like in know, the buffer zone in Nicosia, yeah, there's like that bit no, where it's cooperation? I don't think so. I don't think this area, because the way things are going now politically doesn't look like it. Um, I mean, now with the new president that we have in Cyprus, we have to wait and see, but it doesn't look very likely that we'll ever get this land again, this area. And, and we had opportunities in the past for the referendum. What was the, the referendum about? Well, it was it was the it was drafted by Kofi Annan, UN representative then, and basically, I mean, you know, like any, it was a huge plan, masses and masses of uh, documentation. But like any referendum, there were things that you would people would have to give up and gain. Yes. One of the things that the people were going to gain is this area again. So it was. So big, this would have went back, went to, back Greek, to the Greeks, yeah, Greek and Supreme. certain areas would have gone back to the Turks. Larnaca. Yeah, Larnaca, maybe not not the whole city of Larnaca, maybe districts or parts of the city. So it, it was fifty-fifty, you know. Said it wasn't hundred percent fair, and you know, I was nobody was hundred percent for it. But it was probably the best plan, rather than everything. At least we were we were we were to gain something, and unfortunately, the majority eventually voted no. It took place on both sides. The Turks, most of the majority of Turkish Cypriots voted yes. So they, they wanted are, to join again? They wanted. They wa well, they, you know, the Turkish Cypriots, they don't want to be there. They're a minority and they're shrinking, unfortunately, in numbers. So less and less. And they really wanted to come back as one Cyprus. You know, They wanted that. They wanted to. So for them, it was their opportunity because they're also unhappy here. Not all the Turkish Cypriots are happy with the way they're living. They don't. We met the man at the garage and he said that a lot of this is also because you know, of Turkey, he's not crazy about you know, Erdogan, he's not crazy about the present president they have here on the north side. Yes. They want to be the way they used to be, as you know, coexisting as Cypriots. And they don't they, they don't necessarily get along with the Turkish settlers either. Some obviously have had 
friendships and relationships and, and even marriages and everything, but a lot of them are, are, are not that comfortable living with them either because they have nothing in common. Mm. Are they more in common like, with the with the Greek Greek Cypriots? Cypriots? Yeah, yeah, because we are all, the, you know, Cypriots. I mean, you saw the, the man, he... First of all, the way we talked to each other was as if we were neighbors, friends, you know, yes. old friends, found each other again. There's not much difference between us. However, between the Turkish Cypriots and the, and the Turks, there's a huge difference as well. They don't have that much common, even the religion. I mean, they are, the Turkish Cypriots are Muslim, but they are, they, they practice a form of uh, religion that is not an extreme in any way. While a lot of them who came from mainland Turkey, you know, you'll see women that are covered and they're more religious and more you know so there is a big difference in, in the way they think that the one the turkish cypriots were always islanders you know so there is a big significant difference so ideally the turkish cypriots would always wanted one to be together again with the greek cypriots most, yes most not all most um, and and a lot of the Tur greek cypriots vice versa they wanted to be together there's more cars coming yeah. in must be weird if you live here yeah. driving up and down this abandoned road Which to get to your house they have somebody here because they don't want people, uh, ordinary visitors to this area to actually go right or left. We wouldn't, if you and I took a right or took a left. He would tell us off. Immediately, and I did, so see. <laughs> yeah. When I first came, I was like, oh, it's like no, 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 no. I'm like, oh, what? oh, how come? He said, no, 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 no permission. You need permits. So <laughs> when did they open this area? This bed? This was that always open? That, that was, yeah, that was open. So even when the city was abandoned for all these years that bit would have been part of that bit would have been, been open and here there were obviously um, Barrier barriers and, side. and soldiers and not permitting them in so they could always get a glimpse into this area by looking you know if they um, were residents of this if area they were, yeah yeah but this was not part of the area that was but the general public can't go down to this area. Like we can't. Can we go down? No, 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 no. no we're not allowed. Um, you have to be. There's no hotels. Like, oh no, not at all. I mean, uh, you know, they they have to have a special. It's a, a permit, you know, for people that live here. Agfa. I remember those. Yeah. And, and that's, Cyprus Airways. Yeah. Those there you go. Destinations. So this was a ticketing office also. Um, Daily flights. I, what is he oh. Fish. Hello. Hello. Poor guy. Kalispera. Vera, good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, Kalispera, doggy. Kalispera. Poor baby. He actually looks pretty thin. Concrete's about to give way there. Yeah. It's still a curtain in that one, look. It must have been like um, for the summer, they used to probably close them so they get shaved. The light shade stayed, but yeah. all the concrete's dis disintegrated wow. around it. Honestly, every time I've come here, I've noticed something different, you know, mm -hmm. as, with regards to details on buildings or look, broken windows or even old curtains. I've seen curtains in windows. Yeah, well, they managed to get their shutters closed before they got out. The shutters are all down. So it looks like there's been a crane left behind here. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, year of construction, 1968. Okay. So this crane was made in 1968 okay. and the invasion was sent in 74. Yeah. So the crane would have been in operation for six years before it was just left yeah. here rotting. See. Building a house behind there, building apartments. Yeah, they just stopped? It just stopped. Yeah. The concrete formwork, then you can see the plumbing, the pipes. Yeah just poking up there so it's just left as it was 47 years look at this 73 so these were people um you know how they were probably making these pavements and you know how people come in when the when the cements yeah went. so these were all people that had happened to walk by and they they put their names or their um you know couple as a couple but they were foreign a lot of them to the names because there were a lot of obviously people from abroad so that's 73 and you, see, you can see look at that that's all from that period 73 as and well 73. Bob. that's bob bob i wonder where <laughs> bob is now <laughs> so korean look that's a, a kletirot maybe german Gin. 30th of the 5th 73. three paniotos and rosie were here yeah. 1973. <laughs> I wonder if they're still together. Coffee snack bar. Carlsberg beer crates. Yeah, there's, oh, there's some. There's another place just 
Yeah, they didn't. This one they didn't finish. Didn't get finished. That one they didn't finish. And look at even the. So it's not even been wired whatever. properly yet. Yeah. Cables are in for the lights, but the yeah. fittings aren't in. The steelwork just poking out. <laughs> not sure what that is. But yeah, didn't even get the windows on this one. You know, the, uh, we're known for this Lef Cara lace. It's in, there's a village which is on the south and we're, it's famous and people buy this lace and they usually give it as wedding presents so you can have bedspreads and, and tablecloths for this. So when you, people were getting married, this was in kind of like a dowry as well. And Lef Cara lace, so this would have been the Lef Cara, kind of like a lace shop at the bottom. Hello. Oh, poor thing. Nature's taking its course it's, here. Yeah, here, yes. Obviously. The trees are growing. Yeah. If you come here in a couple of weeks, all these will be yellow. They're absolutely gorgeous. Already see some coming out. See that beautiful, uh, we call it mimosa, and they're absolutely, it's all over Cyprus. Oh, look, there's more there. See, some have come out. Yeah, that yeah. conversation with, in the garage earlier, yeah, yeah, that, was, that was unexpected. Yeah, I'm so glad you captured Oh my god. Oh, this is really nice. Okay. Marhaba. Oh, very nice garage. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm Cypriot. I'm Cypriot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you say Cypriot? We are Cypriot. Uh, we are Cypriot. Ah, yeah. oh, we are. So we're Cypriot. Uh, yeah. See, see, how nice. We are from yeah. the other side, you should say. Cypriot because, you know, no, I don't consider right. myself... The way we I look at it. Greek or I could be Turkish. I'm Cypriot. Of and, course, and we are all Cypriots, you know? You know. You know. The problem yeah. is, it's not the people. Look, how we talk That's to each other. That's what I was telling you. Yeah. It's the uh, politics. politics. They, they've divided us. So That's why. As That's people, why. it doesn't matter. We are Cypriot. We both Absolutely. acknowledge that, all three of us. The problem is Greece, Turkey. Turkey. You know who was suffering? Yeah. Because yeah. America knew that Greece was more closer to Russia than America. So he had to do something to gain uh, Greece. And then what happened? Turn around to Turkey, never forget. My father who used to buy a great newspaper yeah. every day. The they same with my father. My yeah. father spoke Turkish because because they were playing football That's with the right. boys huh. outside and they were learned Turkish. My yeah. father was playing an autopsy. His father was playing for of the Greeks. It didn't matter. There was no such a thing. She's Greek yeah. and Turk. You know, my father was living there, next door was a Greek family. Three, when yeah. Cyprus became independent and the British government, what they said? Hey, Greek people, this is your island. Yeah. Weapons. Genosis. Yeah, they basically brainwashed both Absolutely. sides. Absolutely. They right. provided You're them right. with weapons, they trained them. The Greeks trained the, uh, the Cypriots, the Greek Cypriots. They trained them and said, look, the Turks are going to come and get you and going to take the whole island and vice versa. Sounds told, familiar. <laughs> see, and this is what happened. This is and what I'm saying, but the people, as I said, I have no other Greek friends. I have Turkish friends. There's a lot of Turkish secrets there in Larnaca, the old part of Larnaca. All the street names are Turkish secrets. Yes, yes, you they, see the switch name. Oh, which is there. lovely. Nothing has changed. Like it was. But this garage is really old too. <laughs> I love that composition. Yeah, cause it was so authentic, it wasn't planned. Yeah, these are the things I like, and we always happens on any of my walk, whether it's you know the buffer zone, then can see a like, green line here a lot of times. I can when we go to the old car, we'll meet people just out of the blue, you know, and it's just deciding to go in. This was a hotel that in the summer of '73, ABBA came and performed, but they performed in this hotel because, as I said, they were bringing famous stars here. So, this is military. We have to go all around it. That's military. Again, this was not really legal for them to live here, but they were living here through those years that the city was abandoned. And it, nobody's allowed because it is military personnel and family living in a very small part of that. They're all abandoned apartments that they belong to again. Lordos was one of our most, let's say he owned most of the hotels and property here on the island of Cyprus, so a lot of the apartments were called after him, Lord of Cyprus. They were the, they were developers, plus they also owned hotels. It's a very big, wealthy family, and they still continue to have hotels in Larnaca. It's all just found. Uh, look at the old um, heating, what do you call these? Radiator? Yeah, radiator. <laughs> Oh, 
the art house, kind of English style, pretty good. No photos. Oh yeah, on the left there, they would want you to take photos. There's people in that one, there's in lights one, on. You can see the lights, yeah. The concrete's falling off. Oh yeah. So they did probably some, you know, very basic kind of a whole building, unfinished. We are getting pretty close to my house. So folks, behind me is a little bit of area that's actually been lived in by the Turkish military. But this would have been quite a fancy this was hotel. Asteria's hotel. On the sea front, behind this hotel, we're back onto the sea. You can see the palm trees just today out there. No longer any business in this hotel. No longer any holiday makers. Some ghosts in there, maybe. Is that a crane? Look. Yeah, so there's another crane just all crumpled into the ground, all rusted and decaying. It is like a zombie apocalypse. Lord, there's that Lordos again. Lordos, yeah, and even the trees look like they're dead. <laughs> they died. There's the sea in behind there. Someone's forgot to close their shutter there, look. Yeah, you're gonna see that, see another one. So, and then. Another one at the top. And all these, these here were all apartments. Look, see, cactus survives. Oh, yeah, the cactus has taken over that. <laughs> It's been reclaimed. And my mum, there's a little supermarket, tiny one here. My mum used to come here to get milk and bread and cheese, the basic stuff. She didn't want to have to go all the way into town. She would just come here, which is right. It's really close to our apartment, which is just a couple of apartments away. Where the cheese would have been or the hams and, you know, that would have been a fridge where you could, they would have the cheeses and the hams and the salamis or, can you see that little, that unit there? Deli counter? Yeah. Attention, there is a well. Well, well, well. well, well, well. This building may collapse. <laughs> the avenue shop? Yeah, the here, because obviously, look, you can even see the woodwork where the decorative kind of in the living room where they would have had bookshelves or things like that. Can you see that? Yeah. Sun creams, tobacco, you know, you'd go to the beach and you'd stop here and get your magazines and your tobacco stuff or whatever you're gonna have for the day. <laughs> Omega Apartments, that's the Omega sign, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's the Omega sign. Just about to see the sign at the top. So, yeah. so this is your apartment? Yeah, so welcome to home. <laughs> welcome to my apartment. This is the one that I came back to see 47 years uh, later. And this is the one we were here, we lived on the first floor. Uh, and it was called Serenissima and our apartment is the one right there and if you can see I mentioned earlier that my mom couldn't close the shutters uh, that was the one she That's couldn't there. close so she managed to close that one halfway she closed the one on the right that one was halfway and then the middle one we don't know what happened to it, but that was the one she kind of managed to only close up and that's what she remembered that she she only went till that point and then we had to flee our home. And it's so your apartment was the whole floor? The whole floor, the whole first floor. It's a beautiful apartment. And it was called in the street it was called John Kennedy. You can still see the room. Oh John Kennedy? Yeah, they this whole street was called John Kennedy. And Serenissima was the name of the apartments. But if you look at them, they're actually not a bad state. Bit of paint and yeah, a few windows. Could... And, yeah, who knows? I mean, I'd love to move in there. <laughs> I mean, if you see the view as well, that was the garage somewhere in, under there. If you look there, you can see where my mum would have had her, her parents would have had their bookshelves. There was a dining table there on the left where the bookshelves were. And I celebrated my my last birthday there. My We lost everything. We didn't have our... And this was where we spent all our days. So my mum was a very young mom. I mean, my sister was two, I was four, and at the time she wasn't working, my father, because he was working many, many hours. So she was taking care of us. So we spent all our days here on the beach or playing outside. Pretty nice to come back here 47 years later, not only to see the flat, but also to have a swim in where I used to swim as a four-year-old. 
and now you'll see why. This is added, by the way. Just it wasn't here when I came last time. So they've got a little bar now. Or... Yeah. No, this was here. The bar this was, was here, here, but the swings were not here. And also in the summer, if you come here, they rent sun beds, sun loungers, and and this is where we're gonna sit down and have a break. It's a beer o'clock. It's a beer o'clock. Yes. This is a, of course it's a beer o'clock. Yeah, beer o'clock, folks. This is a beer o'clock. So this is we've done all this walking yeah. for you guys, you know, because this is a public service broadcast. You know, we're doing it for you guys, exactly. inform, entertain, and educate. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Exactly. So, folks, we've just walked. See that blue hotel in the far distance? That was the hotel we started the tour on. And then we walked straight though into the city. Idyllic place to go up, folks. Yeah. Now it's abandoned city and left to rot. All that is still abandoned, but we have no access. Basically, the walk. See where the UN flag is? Yeah. Actually, you're getting the best. I hope you've enjoyed this video in the abandoned city of Russia. If you would like to see more content like this, I would really appreciate if you could give this video a like and hit the subscribe button down below. Till the next time, see you soon.